Hey Daisy. Getting out today. Let's pack your stuff. Let's go. You need somebody found or found out? Call me. Name's Fick. Just Fick. A man in my line gets to scrape past the airbrushed veneer of the scantily clad metropolis. It's good to be self-employed. Along with a gumshoe routine, I also scribble. I serve up all the hard-boiled drama you can eat. Life never reminds you what to do. As time goes by, it's up to you. The desert doesn't have the congested fear of the city. Rather a sense of dread, isolation of coyote madness your feeble screams lost in the Santa Ana winds there can be no comfort in such terrible desolation the desert's already a prison nothing more stark than a prison smack dab in the middle of another prison I'm only visiting the Hooskow today because I'm considering taking a case for a convicted felon uh, Rollo Graham call me Daisy Splendid to meet you, Mr. Fick. Call me Fick, and the Splendid's all mine. Let me guess, you don't have a thousand clams and you're going to appeal to my sense of decency to prove your innocence? I have the money, I assure you. And my punishment is deserved. I forged the Newly. Newly. The famous painter. Seven years ago, I was hired by a gentleman I never met to forge one of his paintings, and I succeeded but was betrayed to the authorities. Two days ago, Newley died when his studio burned to the ground. So what? So, yesterday, I received this. The news of Newley's death only broke this morning. How much are you worth alive? Well, it's either from a morbid insurance broker or someone's threatening you, Dixie. Daisy. And they would kill me too, if they could. That's why I'm staying here. Who's they? I assume it's my former client, but could be anyone who wants to control the market for newlies. Now vibrant after his suspicious death. It's unheralded to forge a newly, Mr. Fick, so with me and my talents out of the way, the market would remain uncompromised. Okay, I see that. You bump off the painter, you rub out the forger, you control the market. But uh, what do I really have to go on here? I mean, did you ever see your alleged client? Only once, through my studio window. When I got paid, he drove the car, the courier came in. She was blonde with the brightest blue eyes. What kind of car? A red Lexus. Well, what did he look like? Medium build, medium height. Mahogany colored hair. Oh, one sec, one sec. Use mahogany to describe hair. Go on. Uh, he was tanned. He wore a brown suit. Not cedar or walnut? Anyway, that could be half the guys in L.A. What else? That's all. Brilliant eye for detail, Doozy. It's Daisy. And I told you, I only saw him through my studio window. I wasn't close enough. Look, Daisy, I just need more than pretty colors of hair or cars or I can't take your case. Please. I don't want to walk out of here with that man. I can't let my daughter grow up without me. You have a daughter? Me too. Okay, think, Daisy. Is there anything useful you can tell me? Well, as far as I know, there are only two galleries in town who have dealt with newlies in the past ten years. All right, that's something. I could start there. But it's pretty thin so far. I can't guarantee results. If you come through, I'll give you another thousand. I can guarantee results. I've been thinking about getting a, I don't know, really expensive tattoo, uh, maybe a Chinese character, like, I don't know, Jackie Chan. You mock me, sir. I do. I may have painted fakes. But my life is very real, and very beautiful. Okay, well, just make sure you wire me the money, and I'll get back to L.A., and I'll see about saving your beautiful life. An extra grand if I got results. These words rang for me with the glory of words like patriotism or bacon. That's the kind of can-do thinking that made this country great. So as an American hero, I had to take his money. I mean, his case. Confession. I'm more of a scribbler than Seamus. I'd much rather pound the keys than the pavement. But until I make writing pay, I'll call my private dickery research for a work in progress. 
in a city of phonies. With my hard-boiled moxie, I figured I could scribble my way to Hollywood's lost city of gold, get to the heart of things, and maybe get a book or a movie deal out of it. Most of my extra scratch went to my daughter's college fund, which now sat at a robust 256 bucks and could use a little fattening. But investigating the art world? Hell, I didn't know art from Shinola. How much are you worth alive? It's a darn good question. Hopefully a couple thousand bucks. Trouble, man, this is Vic. Vic, stop sniffing daisies, or you might get plucked. Well, pluck you too. He Hello? On a case, getting a brick through the window is usually a good sign. This particular brick is not. I'm usually bad at undercover work due to how handsome and unforgettable I probably am. Also, most of my clothes date back before Donkey Kong. But add some glasses and a little sha-na-na and voila, bitches! I'm a fine art painting collectorist guy. Grab your ankles, Los Angeles. You're about to get ficked in the art hall. Well, Mr. Baird, I am certainly interested in what you have here. <laughs> but I can't help but read the papers. Uh, what do you know about Newley? Well, uh, Newley's work is groundbreakingly postmodern, quirky and figurative, yet it maintains a, a sense of open and abstract can't space within the understand a word. More so now that he's deceased. Are you interested in collecting Newley's? Oh, well, as an investment, sure. <laughs> I've had some success flipping Kincaid's. <laughs> flipping? Oh, I'm sorry, am I saying that correctly? Kincaid's? <laughs> yes, yes. Whoa, <laughs> ever heard of toothpaste? There are certain crafts buyers who hope that acquiring a name will add a veneer of substance to their nouveau riche existence. <laughs> uh, so I understand the local forger of Newley's is being released. Indeed. Daisy, I think his name is. Really? Daisy? <laughs> Did this guy eat a diaper? <laughs> yes. But the nickname comes from a flower tattoo on his arm. It's too bad he went into foredreaming. That sort of whimsically rebellious attitude would be very marketable. <laughs> Homework. Learn everything there is to know about art. Note. Check and see if Daisy's tattoo is common knowledge. If Bear could have known about it without knowing him. Get Bear some Tic Tacs. Stat. Hmm, red Lexus. If customs is going to hold us up that long, there are ways around that. Good. Then do it! Nice place. The gallery's by appointment only. How did you get in here? No, I just slipped in under the door. Look, a moment of your time, Mr. Faisal. I'm interested in discussing Newleys. Yeah, you and everybody else. Wait. You're a journalist. I can smell writer all over you. <laughs> well, look, I scribble. Get the hell out of here. Well, do you deal in Newleys or not? Can you verify their authenticity? Oh, hey, blue eyes. Can you get me a bottle of Evian and ask your boss there to pull the stick out of his? Oh, hey! Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Hey, that's a nice piece. Oh! Oh! Although vastly outnumbered, I think I got some pretty good hits in. Pretty sure she tore a nail when she armbarred me. Ah, oh, nope. That was me. Home again, Jiggity Jig, where I keep my band-aids and running water. Got bounced today, hard, by a blonde she-donkey. I can admit that because I'm very sensitive. Scabby nipples aside, though, my brain had to take a huge dump onto the typewriter. I'd been digesting a steamy gumbo of spicy leads about the dealers on Daisy's shortlist. First, Paul Baird. 
who didn't know enough about oral hygiene, but maybe a little too much about my client. Second, there was plenty not to like about Faisal. He clearly had a hand in the game. A hand with the gunk of crime under its fingernails. Not that it mattered much, but he also had the right make of car and the blonde with the blue eyes. Usually, my job involves watching some gardener share tender moments with a naughty housewife. But this time, I had a shady exchange of a painting for cash by real live assholes on a dead-end street by the reservoir. Oh, I was all too cool to keep to myself, and I needed some surveillance tech support, so I figured it was time to go see a friend of mine. Al's who I go to for research, equipment, and other technical difficulties. A former Marine, he got shot twice in Korea, and then once over here. So he likes to keep a lot of distance between himself and everything, everybody, tigers. You have my private number. Al, why don't you fix that? So people without my private number won't darken my door. Come on in, Flatfoot. After his wife died, Al retired from the private sector on a small fortune from his many patents. He probably owned one of his inventions. I'll give you a hint. It rhymes with Smeflon. Also, he has the Wi-Fi, which I think is more impressive, but whatever. I needed to bone up on this newly character. I'd already followed his career for years. Loved his early work. Got a self-portrait he did back before uh, an extra zero got tacked onto his prices. Want to see it? Uh, no, that's great, Al. I'm on a case here. All right, Newley and Daisy. Grant Newley. Born 1961, meteoric rise to fame, mid-90s. No pictures, no interviews. He had patrons lining up to buy work he hadn't even produced yet. Then, all of a sudden, he vanished. One day, he and his wife just disappeared and were never heard from again, until a few days ago. Well, what about Daisy? Did, did you find anything in your archive about the tattoo? There was just a mug shot from when he got busted. It didn't show the tattoo. Baird knew about it. Forget Baird. He's clean as a whistle. Everybody else stinks, though. What did you find out about your convicted forger in your background check? Well, I didn't really have the time. He has a B&E was... &E on his record. My God, if he forged a newly, he probably stole it. My guess is that he tried to fence it with an underworld punk like Faisal, and then they rigged up the forgery scheme. So you really don't think Daisy's on the level? Where do you think he gets his money? Hired by somebody he never met? Bullshit. Daisy is still connected, and he's working some angle. Best to get out now. Turn the money. You'll live longer. No dice. I already spent it. But I like your theory, though. Enough to try shaking the tree with it. If what the old man said held any water, it might make sense to put a scare into slap nuts and that darling she-donkey of his. That's hideous. Out of focus. I don't know what that is. Oh, hey there, blue eyes. If the door was ajar. Your boss around? Oh, not feeling plucky anymore, huh? What the hell is this? Ah, you Faisal. Look, we got off on the wrong foot last time. I'm not really a journalist. Hell, they already know who I am. Figured I'd return this. Also figure it's time to stop with all the silly flirting and the prank phone calls and just talk. I'm listening. So, how much are we worth alive? Look, Daisy wants to renegotiate. He wants to live. You probably want something else. I don't know. More Amazon thugs, maybe? Oh, round two? Bring it. Come on. I was kidding. Stop following me. So far, today just seemed like a bad rerun of yesterday. Time for a commercial break. Hmm, what now? Oh, man. Same brick, same window. Faisal. 
And so I guess I had him. I put in calls to Al and my bartender friend Liz to fill them in, just in case Faisal wanted to use another brick on my face. Then I boned up on my detector sizes. Pathetic. I needed to meld my body, mind, and spirit into a hard-boiled juggernaut of justice. So I knew Faisal's riding Daisy. But what if he also killed Newly? That could be the brass ring I'd been licking for. If I cracked the case. Money. Fame. Money. Looks like my deadbeat days are over. Although Baird was pretty much in the clear, how he knew about Daisy's tattoo was still giving me an itch. Time to scratch and sniff. Is there something here I could help you with? Hello again. Well, we both have confessions to make, Mr. Baird. I'm not really an art dealer, I'm a writer. Oh. Now it's your turn. I'm wondering how long you've known Rollo Graham, Mr. Baird. You know, Daisy. I'm afraid to say we've never met. Cut the crap. You knew all about the connection between his dumbass nickname and the tattoo on his arm. Everyone knows that. No one knows that. It's never been shown or mentioned in any of the press coverage. Not once. Gossip abounds in the art world, sir. Okay. <clears throat> well, then what do you make of this? It's amateurly rendered. I have to say, it has a certain boldness. Kind of an American primitive. A dead end. Nothing here but more art Sinister battle. association of the medium is interesting. Are you the artist? Oh, nuts. Thank you for your time, Mr. Baird. Oh, and Baird. Time to go back to jail. I hope that's the only time I ever have to say that. Well, Daisy May. Doesn't take Matlock to figure out that the same person who's been harassing me sent you that letter. Now all that's left to do is lean on him a little bit to lay off. A man in his position wouldn't want to be exposed. Thank you, Mr. Fick. My daughter thanks you. Well, it's just Fick, and don't lay that sob routine on me again. Your prison issue pants are on fire. What do you mean? I mean, I don't buy that you never met your client. I think you've known who he was all along. You were happy to take the rap for forgery as long as he kept your nest feathered. But then something went south, didn't it? I told you I never met him. Daisy, he's not paying you because you're a great painter. He's paying you to keep your mouth shut. But then you got greedy, didn't you? He told me I should be compensated for my genius. I forged a newly. No one can do that. He said my career showed promise. Hmm. Well, I'm sorry I didn't call, Precious. But you didn't hire me to stalk somebody. You hired me for protection because things got out of control. Yes. You mean I'm right? Wow. Look, we can still make this work. I'll sit down with Faisal. Faisal? What? Daisy, you don't have to protect his identity anymore. We got him. No, seriously. You mean that gangster from downtown? He's not the guy. No? Well... Uh, well, um, Who hired you then? Oh my god. You barely know what's going on. You suck as a detective. You mean I'm wrong? This case sucks. I thought I had the whole picture, but it's not square at all. For the love of Pete, double rye rocks, please. Daisy's escorting flower. He's wilting all over the place. He says I got the wrong guy, and I know he means it, but what have I missed? Fick. Oh, and that Faisal guy? He's so crooked he can't even pee straight. That overdressed greaseball lurking around his so-called gallery, right? Like some mafia pasha terrorist? Fick. Letting some steroidal blonde tart handle the rough trade? I see those guys... What, Liz? What? Gosh. Let's have a seat. Well, we're gonna get a table. Common... 
please God, don't let me die. But if you have to take me, at least kill him too. Amen. Go ahead, Mr. Fick. Steady your nerves. Can I get you anything? An apple teeny? If someone told me yesterday I'd have to spend any time on you, I wouldn't have believed it. But apparently you're not as stupid as you look. Well, my ex-wife would disagree. How did you know? That you'd be here. I tapped your phone line. Ah. Did you use a brick? Rebecca's stunt with the brick was ill-advised. And that ridiculous letter. I should probably keep her on a shorter leash. She's a mad dog sometimes. Yeah, well, try a rolled up newspaper. <gasps> Are you finished, funny trouble man? Yes! Uh, yeah, yeah. Anytime I want, I can kill you with a phone call. Or maybe I'll just take you out back myself. Hmm? What are you doing in your pocket? Chewing gum. I thought I might throw up just then. Do you want some? Pull yourself together. I've decided not to kill you, Mr. Fick. You're my only real line to Daisy at present. I thought he worked for you. No. It'd be nice, but I can't get to Daisy. Somebody else owns him. The best I can do until he's released is to try to scare him off his current employer. Paul Baird? No, though he's involved. Somebody bigger than Baird standing behind him. At first I thought it might be his brother Mike, the real art player. But whoever could engineer killing Newley is way beyond either of them. So Newley was murdered? Well, what do you think? The timing is too perfect. Uncatalogued paintings moving like lightning through Baird's back door. Daisy's jail term ending. So what do you want from me? I know you're investigating Baird. That's useful to me. And I want you to deliver a message, loud and clear so there's no mistake. Daisy's out of the forgery racket or is dead. And so are you, Mr. Fick. I'll be watching both of you. And don't fuck around. In touch. Got it. Thank you for your time. Kill you with a phone call. Or maybe I'll just take you out back myself. What are you doing in your pocket? <laughs> wow. Not bad. I figured you for a dead man. Nope. I'm just lightly soiled. Sorry. Is everything okay? With this case, I got more questions and answers now. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. It'll work out. Anyway, I, I'm glad you're safe. Well, as safe as I'll ever get, doll. Um, well, I should go. Okay. So with all this going on, are you going to miss class tomorrow? I don't know. I'll be there. Hey, you want some go? Yes, thank you. See you tomorrow. Bye. says Baird Brothers Gallery. But every time I come here, I get the same brother. Question, who's Mike? And who's the dame? As I tailed Mystery Lady through traffic, I wondered if every LA art dealer kept a blonde woman on hand. Maybe when you rent a gallery, she just comes with the space. She ended up at a bungalow in Echo Park. Recently sold by owner. Huh, ain't that something. Yes. What do you want? Uh, ma'am, I'm <clears throat> with Friendly Benefits Insurance. Now, I know insurance is a gamble, and if you're over 65... 65? You're not selling insurance. You're another fucking writer, aren't you? Well, I scribble. I'll save us both <clears throat> some time. 
He's dead. Do you understand? My husband is dead. That's it. End of story. Have some respect and leave me alone. The newly widowed. Widow newly? Ah, she was worth watching, and not just because of my boner. Drop one of Al's tracker thingies and I'm in and out like a ninja. Smoother than lube. All right, let's take it in deep. It's so deep. Just go with me here now. You're a fly on the wall in your character's climactic scene. What do you want to say to your character face to face? Now, reach in your pocket and hand them something meaningful. A glass of wine, maybe just a hug. And let's take it in deep. Oh my God, oh. All right, open your eyes. Didn't that feel great? Didn't that feel wonderful? I, I, it's important to remember that it all comes from you. Nobody has your vision. I remember when I worked on Almost an Angel, the studio executive thought that Kent Freeman was a crackpot. <laughs> I know. He didn't understand my vision. But getting fired opened up the door at a rival studio where, as a script consultant, I helped keep Glamour Boat from capsizing. Thank you. Okay, any questions? Okay, so same time next week. And let's remember, writers aren't born. You owe me a check this week, don't leave so quick, okay? Thank you. Oh my gosh, and class is over, thank you. Um, Mr. Friedman, yeah, I, I wondered if I could get a little more feedback on my screenplay. Sure, it's uh, it's Fick, right? Just Fick. Yeah, I um, I remember, I remember this. I think you spend a lot of time breaking writing's golden rule. Show me, don't tell me. Your character seems to spend a lot of time talking to himself. Gotcha. Note to self, narrate less. Yeah. The audience is looking for a spectacle. You're just showing them, you know, the man behind the curtain, pulling the strings, you know, amusing himself. The man behind the curtain. Thank you for your time. Some pep talk. The man behind the strings, pulling the curtain, playing with himself. Luckily, I didn't have to think about it too long. I had other boobs to motorboat. The Widow Newley was on the move. And sure, it could have just been out for a Manny Petty, but she was all I had. So I gumshoot her out to a Burbank hotel, one that probably saw more used condoms than rich widows. He came to the house. He's probably the same guy who's been hassling you all week. Tall, uh, stupid looking. Um, He's getting a bit too close, but I'm not worried about him. Oh my God, that's Baird. We'll be out of the country soon enough. All this ends tomorrow, Janet. We'll get the rest of the paintings off our hands, and then we'll make arrangements to take care of Daisy as soon as he's released. I wish Mike were here. Mike's not here, sweetheart. I'll be back here later tonight. Let's keep the phone calls to a minimum in the meantime. I'm sorry. I just needed to see you. Don't be. I love you. The man behind the curtain, pulling all the strings, jerking off. Well, I knew another jerk off. So, Daisy, enjoying your last day in jail with your paints and your schemes while the rest of the world's out there hustling to make an honest buck? I overreacted last time. I'm sorry. Look, I'm pretty sure they're planning on killing you tomorrow. Doesn't matter. I received confirmation of a wire transfer today. My daughter's future is secure, even if I don't have one. So, you're in contact with your former employer. 
I guess I shouldn't be surprised. After all, you're using me, right? I've been paying you. Yeah, peanuts compared to what you'll bank. You needed me to get Faisal off your back and to put the heat on certain people. You weren't scared. You wanted to stay in here, buy time to negotiate a better deal. With who? Uh, the Widow Newley? With Mike and Paul Baird? Hmm. Can't say I've ever heard of Paul. Mike's always been a friend of up-and-coming artists. Look, I'm sick of this. I've got one more play to make to save your sorry ass, and I'm making it tonight. Here's the stinger, though. I don't even think you have a daughter. What are you talking about? Even if I gave her all the money in the world, I couldn't stand the thought of never seeing my daughter Haley again. Or of not being there for her when she needed me. You think about that. You call me tomorrow. I'll get back to L.A. and I'll do what you're paying me to do. Save your sad, proud, pathetic, marginally beautiful excuse for a life. We'll talk about money later. Bella. My daughter's name's Isabella. Al, I was thinking about a bait and flush play. Say, uh, Operation Hat Trick. I gotta pull out a rabbit tonight. I'll do it if you're not too hungover on Sunday to mow my lawn. Are we clear? I'll take some vitamins. Oh, yeah. I thought you'd want to see this. It's that early self-portrait of Newley that I mentioned. Not bad, eh? Not bad at all. Hey, do you mind if I borrow this for the evening? You be careful with it. This was my wife's favorite piece of art. Oh, yeah. You bet, Al. Thanks. Okay, then. Operation Hat Trick. <laughs> yep. I'll call you in a bit. <laughs> Thanks, Al. How's the art business these days, Baird? Making out all right? Again with you. Are you insane? It's after hours. I've got things that I have uh -huh. to do. Uh-huh. Gotta go stoop the widow newly. Now look here. Who are you, anyway? Name's Fick. I'm a private dick. Currently in the employ of Rollo Graham. You know, Daisy. Daisy? I've been telling you that he... So, you steal Newley's wife, allowing you to commandeer his inventory after you murder him. That's a ridiculous accusation. And then you double-cross the forger. And you sell his work along with the real Newley's and make a mint. You figure all that's left to do is bump Daisy off now. Is that about right, Baird? I, I could never kill anyone. Oh, a lot of people could for that kind of cheddar. You don't buy it? Me neither. Try this. Janet Newley got tired of being married to a wackadoo artist, and she painted him out of the picture. What? She had access to him, his studio, his whole backlog of soon-to-be-posthumous Newleys. All she needed was a putz like you to finesse the deals. That's preposterous. Janet would never... Oh, come off it, Baird. I can have the police on their way to the Safari Motel in minutes. Only the cops don't need to know you're involved. So let's talk turkey. Is it too late to call off the hit on Daisy? There's no hit on Daisy. I did it. I killed Millie. So please, let's leave Janet out of this. Maybe. And oh yeah, just my finger. How much you got in there? A hundred thousand. Good, expenses have been racking up lately. Thinking about a new car and some bling bling, you know how it is. We'll get back to that. I need Daisy's safety guaranteed. We've been compensating him all along. That money's for him. The only reason Daisy's whining about a hit is because he's a self-obsessed, paranoid poser. Well, maybe. But it turns out someone's really been threatening him, too. You familiar with a rival art dealer, a heavy hitter named Faisal? Oh, him. I'm not surprised. I know, right? He's a dick. All right, so Daisy's been whining, huh? But not to you, I reckon. More likely to the charming Mrs. Newley. Am I right, Baird? I... You're a limp noodle, Baird. Daisy says he's never even heard of you. Now, why would he lie about that? What do you want, Mr. Fick? It's just Fick, okay? And I want you to start telling me the truth, Mr. Newley. What the? I thought I had destroyed that one. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's just a sketch, you know? 
Hmm? It's not bad. Go ahead, spill. I'm listening. If you knew, why'd you string me along? I had to see how you would react when I dangled Daisy in front of you. you know, I actually liked Daisy very much. He was an excellent student. Maybe even a friend. Why the hell did you hire him to forge your own paintings? I wanted to see if it could be done. Daisy surpassed expectations. Under my guidance, he was soon producing work that could have been my own. He picked up right where I left off. Hmm. I imagine that stung a bit. Is that why you turned him in? I was enraged. We argued, but I had stopped producing work myself. I, I was tired of it. All of it. The whole art game. Ah, newly, the genius dried up. Yes. He took his sentence gracefully. He realized he had to do what all budding geniuses do when they surpass their teachers. Had to lock himself up for a while. Develop his own talent. Yeah, five years in this case. He agreed to it by providing for his family in the meantime and bought his silence. His silence? Grant, you're telling this idiot everything. Hun, wait, wait a minute. Shut up. My brother died for this, Mr. Art Hooks of the century. Wait. Who's your brother? He's a better man than you, dipshit. Ask him yourself. Janet, what are you doing? One bullet. Problem solved. And another one for Daisy. We're not killing Daisy. We've discussed this. Tomorrow we give him his money and we get on a plane. He'll be reasonable. I'm sure Mr. Fick here is willing to be reasonable as well. They will ruin everything. Everything my brother died for. Wait a sec. Mike, oh, he's your brother, not yours. Oh. Mike Baird was one of the first people to champion my work in the 90s. After my breakdown, he helped engineer my disappearance by introducing me into the operations of his galleries as his brother. So that was his body in the studio fire. So you guys rubbed him out? We did not rub out my brother, you ass clown. Mike was dying, painfully. He came up with the scheme. The night of the fire, we made a nice farewell dinner and opened a great bottle of wine and Mike took some pills and slipped away peacefully. We never should have agreed to it. We killed him, Grant. Now he's dead, gone, and morons like this schmuck and Daisy. Mike wouldn't have wanted this. Hey, look, looks like you guys have a lot to sort of talk through, so maybe I'll just, uh... Okay, what if I told you there was a clean way out? One where you didn't have to spend hours mopping my stylish brains off the floor before the cops get you for homicide. Try 30 minutes. We have a wet vac. Back at the house? Hunt, hear him out. Now look, you, you already said this was Daisy's money, right? I'll deliver it for you. That way you don't have to risk him finding out you're still alive. You guys keep all the money from the newly fire sale, you keep your new identities, you skip town. I'll keep my mouth shut, I swear. Why should we trust you? Because you don't have a choice. Now give him the money so I can turn this thing off and go watch Hannity. Perfect timing, Al. He knows where I am, and he can have the cops here in minutes. So now we gotta pay this guy too? No, I'm independently wealthy, so I really don't care. Who is that? Look, as long as Daisy's safe, you're safe, okay? But that means no more forgeries, otherwise I'm left holding the bag with Faisal. What about the man in the hat? Well, he stands for justice, ma'am, and so do I. Signing off now, over now. Your move. <sighs> don't betray us, Mr. Fick. Well, it's just Fick, and don't worry about it. Look, I don't mind you trying to put one over on the art world, Mr. Newley. You know, it seems like kind of a rigged game anyway. Well, uh, okay. <laughs> well, no reason to drag this out. Uh, thank you for your time. So it felt good to finally solve the case of the forger who thought he was going to die, but instead got rich without me having to get shot in the crotch. Titles are tricky. Anyway, I did right by my fraud client. Daisy got enough money to make a new start with his family, enough to make up for all the time he'd lost stroking his ego behind bars. Later, I received an invitation to a one-man show of his work at a highfalutin L.A. gallery, arranged, no doubt, by old friends. I didn't attend, but I read later that a bunch of previously unknown Newleys auctioned for over $10 million at Sotheby's, and that Newley, for now, remains dead, as are any who smell his gums. Well, I mowed Al's lawn as I said I would. I owed him, sure. But I also couldn't deny him one of the few pleasures he had left in watching me sweat. For all I knew, I was his only friend. Oh yeah, a painting arrived in my mail, addressed to the man in the hat. 
It wasn't to my taste, so I passed it on to someone I knew would appreciate it. Hush money, I figure. As for me, I was due some R&R. Like my guardian angel said, it had all worked out just fine. And with my hard-earned bonus, I was getting close to a semester's tuition for my kid, or at least the books, holding out for a scholarship. So everyone got what they wanted, and no one got hurt. It all that bad. Well, that pretty much wraps up all the loose ends, unless I'm forgetting anything. Until my next case, I'm going to relax and get back to my scribbling. Trouble, man. Yeah? Wait, wait, slow down. You lost your memory. Are you sure? <laughs>